All right, the problem we're looking to explain here is given an equation for a line of x minus 3y plus 6 equals 0, we want to try to find a point that is closest to the ordered pair 5, negative 1. The way we're going to do that is first we need to know our distance formula. Since we're looking for something that's going to be closest to this point, we want to find a shortest distance or a minimum distance. Then also using all this given information and still inspired by the distance formula, we want to set up a function where we can uh, try to find that point that is the, uh, the minimum distance away. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the equation that's given. And we're going to set up an arbitrary point. This arbitrary point, we're going to let x represent the x value. But for the y value, this is where the equation comes in handy to know, we're going to take that equation and we're going to solve for y because that will give us something in terms of x, making this a little bit easier to solve as we go since everything will be in terms of the same variable. Looks like I've got a, an incorrect symbol in here. Sorry about that. That's a plus sign. All right, now we're good. So solving for y. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to swing the 3y over. And divide by 3 to both sides. We've got x plus 6 over 3 as our y value, so we can insert that in up here. All right, so I got my arbitrary point figured out. Now I want to make use of this distance formula to create a function where I can start to analyze this minimum distance. Okay, if I can find this minimum distance, eventually solve for an x, I can figure out what that uh, point is going to be. So plugging into my distance formula, I've got the square root of, now it's the difference in the x's. So for my difference in my x's, I'm going to take the x from my arbitrary point and subtract the x from the given point. As far as the y's are concerned, we're going to follow a similar approach. We're going to take the y expression we came up with here of x plus 6 all over 3, and we're going to subtract back to our y value at the given point. So we're subtracting negative 1 means we're going to add 1 on. In terms of simplifying this, some expansion would be required. So if I expand out the binomials and collect some like terms, ultimately where that's going to lead me is to a distance formula where I have the square root of 10 over 9 x squared minus 8x plus 34. So there is my distance formula, and if I want to be a little more official about it, we're used to seeing a, a function notation in there, I could make this my d of x. And I understand that to find any kind of minimum or maximum ideas, it's helpful to find a derivative of my function. So I'll take my derivative. If I take my derivative, I've got this quantity here that would be to the 1 half power. So I bring down the 1 half. I've got that quantity inside still. Just following a chain rule here. Subtract 1 away from that power that was 1 half. We've got negative 1 half now. I'm going to take the derivative of the inside. So inside, using a power rule, it would be 20 ninths x minus 8 as the quantity I attach on. If we simplify this a little bit, well, we do have that negative exponent in play, and everything is attached to that expression with the negative exponent. We take our 20 ninths x minus 8, that quantity would go on top, and we'd have a denominator of 2, and that quantity of 10 ninths x squared minus 8x plus 34, all raised now to a positive 1 half on the bottom. 
Now here's the thing about the derivative in terms of the, uh, the application here for how we want to proceed. Normally we'd be finding critical numbers at this point by exploring where the derivative is equal to zero where it does not exist. For application purposes, we only have to focus on the equal zero side. So where does d prime equal zero? That actually makes it not so bad here because we only have to take the numerator, which was 29th x minus h, set that equal to zero, and solve. So if we solve that, now well, let's see, I'd be adding my 8 over, multiply both sides by 9 maybe to, to clear that fraction, and divide by 20. If we reduce that down, we're going to find that x is 18 fifths. So remember what our goal is here. We're given an equation for a line. We're trying to find a point on that line that is the closest to the point that was given as 5, negative 1. When we set up our arbitrary point over here of x and x plus 6 over 3, well, one of the things we need to find if we're going to find that point is the x value. We found the x value over here. So if I'm setting up my solution, right now I know that x is 18 fifths. As far as what y is, well, we take y, or sorry, we take x, rather, is 18 fifths, and we plug back in over here. If you take 18 fifths, add 6, and divide 3, going through that calculation, eventually we will end up at 16 fifths. So we've now found the point that's on that line, which is closest to 5, negative 1. And if we wanted to confirm that this point is, in fact, the closest, uh, what we could do from here is we could set up a little chart. And on that chart, we explore what's going on with our derivative for certain intervals. Um, the solution we came up with for x, which is serving as our critical number of 18 fifths, we could explore the interval of negative infinity up to that number of 18 fifths. We could pause at 18 fifths and then go from 18 fifths onward. If we start taking values from these intervals and plug back into our derivative in the simplified form, what we would find is if we take something that is less than 18 fifths, so let's see, 18 fifths, if we divide that out, is going to be 3 and 3 fifths. Something less than 3 and 3 fifths would be 0. That'd be an easy one to work with. If you plug back in over here to your derivative, by plugging in 0, you're going to notice that you get a negative value back. So what that means about the original function is it's decreasing. As far as this interval is concerned, something that's larger than 18 fifths, so something larger could be 10 maybe, right? Take 10 plug back in over here, what you're going to find is you get a positive result back. So when the first derivative is negative, we know the function is decreasing. And when the first derivative is positive, we know the function is increasing. So if you think about it, around this 18 fifths that we found for our key point, perhaps going down to that point and then back up, this would have to be a minimum value. So we've got our relative minimum point, so to speak, that answers uh, the question here.